Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly Jones Jewelry. Today I'm going to show you how to make these nice hoop dangle earrings. They're very dangly. So once you've made your rings and your bars, it's just a matter of piecing it all together really. So it's quite a simple one for you today. I've put a list in the description below of everything you'll need and as always, there's links to my Facebook and Etsy. Please mention me when sharing your work online made from my tutorials. Thanks guys. To make these earrings you'll need, um, for the jump rings, I've used 1.5mm wire which is 14, 14 is it? Yeah, 14 gauge. So for the larger hoops, that's 20mm, I'll use this 20mm cab. So anything that's got a circumference of 20 millimetres or less. I wouldn't go any bigger because as the bigger you go, the weaker the, the jump ring is. So I wouldn't go any bigger than 20 millimetres. So I've just wrapped that wire around that stone to get that size. So I've got two of those. And then I've used my bail pliers for the others. These are, um, so you need two, you need two 20 millimetre outside measurement. You need two 12 millimeter outside measurement, which is the larger one of your bale plier sizes. Then you need two, I've wrapped these around three times, so you've got little triple ones. And those are, oh, I'm covered in fluff. Those are um, eight millimeters, was it? Yeah, eight, so these, sorry, these are eight millimeter outside measurement with the triple ones and then I've used one millimeter wire which is 18 gauge <clears throat> so I've cut two lengths at 4.5 centimeters four lengths at 3.5 centimeters and four lengths at 2.5 centimeters so that's all your jump rings in your bars and then I've got ear wires when I'm making earrings out of copper I use um, gold filled for the ear wires, gold filled wire. Tools, <clears throat> obviously these bail pliers are really handy because they've got all the different sizes on for making your, your jump rings. Those are beadsmith bail pliers. I'm using two pairs of um, pliers <clears throat> for opening and closing jump rings and that. Any pliers you like at all, you just need two pairs. <coughs> What's this going? Round nose pliers and wire cutters. And I'm using my sturdy wire cutters today <coughs> for cutting the larger wires. So make your jump rings up as I have. And then we'll focus on the, the bars. When you cut in these, you want to make sure that you use the uh, the flat side of the cutters facing in so you've got a nice flat edges otherwise you'll have a pointy edge and i'm going to hammer these so i should have mentioned you're going to need a hammer so you need a hammer and a block and obviously i can't do this behind the camera so i'm going to go and hammer these what i'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it and hammer the sort of mid to end of the wire and then having a look at the size of it as it splays you want to sort of match up the sizes so they're all roughly the same hammer them one at a time try and keep them nice and straight and just hammer from the middle towards the end so I've carefully hammered those I've hammered the ends flat the other, <clears throat> the other ends are still rounded, those ends are flat. I've done that with all of the shorter lengths. Just lots of little taps so you don't put any hammer marks on there. From about the midsection to the end really. So now take your round nose pliers and we'll shape the ends. So I'm going to start with the big ones. If you can remember a 
place on your round nose pliers and we're going to roughly do them all to the same if you're using really thick wire for your jump rings you, your ring you, that goes around here now if I would get around your jump rings it needs to be quite big so I'd say at least there on your pliers you could always get a pen and put a little mark on there so that you always you do them all to the same size or similar so I'm just going to bend that end around the pliers like that and I forgot to mention you've got to hold it flat so hold it so you're definitely holding it straight so you're holding it flat because when these are done you want them all to face forward so your ring goes to the back and then the front is a nice flat edge so we're going to do that with all of these doing them all roughly in the same place on the pliers and making sure you're holding it so it's flat and we're just going to round, put a nice loop in the top of all of those wires that we've cut. So once you've curled all the ends, looped all the ends with quite large loops. And you've got all your jump rings ready. And you've done your ear wires. Now we need to piece it all together. So take your loop, very carefully just take bending it just a little bit. We need a little one, then the next size, then the larger one, then a smaller one, then the smallest one. We've got five, then we need a triple jumping on there, and we need to close that. So overbend it a little bit, and then make sure it's nice and secure. So now you take your bigger jump ring, I'm going to need my pliers to open these, this, little twist into there, and then you need your ear wire, making sure everything's the right way. And there we have it, a nice dangly earring there finished. So I'm going to make the other one up and then I shall show you what they look like together. So I'm just making my second one. When you're closing this big jump ring, if you bend it past itself a little bit, squeeze it together a little, when you pull it back, it kind of presses together a bit more sturdy just thought I'd show you that because I just discovered that too in it so I've made mine and the only way I can hold them to show you is by putting them on this pencil they do dangle lovely and I'm sure they will look really lovely when they're on I'm going to oxidize these just to see what detail it does bring out. I reckon it'll be nice on that triple ring. And when you oxidise jump rings and it stays black on the inside of the ring is quite nice. So I'm going to give that a go and see what, what happens. 
So there they are, I've oxidised them. They are lovely and dangly. And it's really brought out all the dark tones. Got dark edges inside, outside the jumpings. So yeah, I'll definitely recommend oxidising them, even though they're just jumpings. So there we go, something a bit different for you this week to play around with. You can always add these danglers off pendants and things and use the jumpings, always using jumpings for loads of different things. Thanks for joining me this week and I shall see you all soon. Bye! So I just wanted to talk to you quickly about a new tutorial I've just released. It's a written tutorial called Kiwi. And um, I absolutely have fallen in love with this one so much. This is mine. I've just taken it off just to show you. I've been living in this. So it's just a little two stone pendant with a little bead, a bit of weaving. And um, that's available now in my Etsy shop. And I've just made another. Absolutely love it. So um, yeah, written tutorial is it's a download PDF. Loads of pages, loads of pictures. Follow along at your own pace. You fancy giving it a go head on over to my etsy shop i'll put a link on the screen thanks everybody